Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're going to be solving a Physics 7a practice problem on the topic of thermodynamics. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe as that really helps our channel. So this is the problem that we're going to be solving today. Depicted on the right is a thermodynamic cycle performed on an ideal gas, no phase change. The process A to B is an isothermal process, B to C is an isobatic process, C2A is an adiabatic process. Note, you are giving pressures at states A, B, C, and the volumes at states B and C. Uh, so the first thing that we have to answer is what is the change of internal energy for the entire cycle? Uh, then we have to determine the sign of work done by the entire cycle and the sign of the heat transfer for the whole cycle. And then part three says determine the volume at state A, show your work. Oh, and then there is a part four, which says, uh, calculate the work done in the process B to C, explain how you determine both the sign and the magnitude of the work. Okay, so as you can see, I have my uh, notes over here and I basically have a little drawing of the, uh, uh, of the cycle A, B, C, and I have like all of my information that I need. So let's just go ahead and get started. So the first thing is, what is the change in internal energy for the entire cycle? Explain. So basically, uh, so that's kind of an easy question, just because we know our fundamental equations and we know that um, delta U is equal to changing E thermal. And E thermal is... Uh, you know, your number of total modes, one half kV delta T. Now, in this case, uh, your delta T is equal to zero because your full cycle is going from A to A, so you're going from temperature at A to temperature at A, so that means that delta T is equal to zero. If delta T is equal to zero, there is no change in thermal energy, and because we don't have bond, uh, change in bond energy on this cycle, then that means that delta U must be equal to zero as well. Going from A to A, must be equal to zero. Okay, um, and that would be the same going from B to B or C to C. I know that they aren't specifying, but they are asking for the full cycle, which means like wherever you want to start, just make sure that that is also your end point. And you know, whatever you want to call your beginning and your end, this is still going to be true. So delta U is going to be zero for a full cir circle, and that is always going to be the, the case. Uh, something that you must have seen in lecture, which is an alternative explanation, is that internal energy is a state function. Therefore, only the you know, the, the initial and final states matter, and because they are the same, then you didn't change anything. So you can either explain it by claiming a state function, or you can use the actual equation, which, you know, in my opinion, that's a great way to explain something by just using the equation and proving that everything has to multiply to zero. Okay, so now for part B. We have to determine the sign of work done by the entire um, cycle. Okay, so this is something that a lot of you will probably do very easily, either by doing the rule of the clockwise, anti-clockwise, or, you know, whatever you want to do. However, because this is the first video that I do about it, I'm just going to do a little bit of an explanation. So assuming that the beginning, uh, this is the entire cycle. So I'm just going to assume that it's from A to A. Again, whatever you want to do it, that's fine. So your work going from A to A is equal to A to B plus B to C plus 
C to A. And that if you add them up, then that basically gives you the entire cycle. Now, in terms of positives versus negatives, uh, we do have to remember, again, from our introduction video, that it's positive if you have a decrease in volume, and it's negative if you have an increase in volume. So based on this, going from A to B, you have an increase in volume, which means this is negative. And then from B to C, we have a decrease in volume, which means positive. And then this means positive as well. So how do we figure out whether the entire thing is positive or negative? Well, you have to look at the magnitudes. So on any given process, the magnitude, it's the area under the curve. So in this case, it should be fairly obvious that the area under the curve from A to B is bigger than the one from B to C or C to A, because the area under the A to B curve is this entire thing. And then B to C is just this part right here, this rectangle. And then C to A is just this part. But as you can see, if I have all of my purple and I subtract the green chunk and I subtract the orange chunk, I still have all of this purple left, which means that this sign, uh, that this magnitude is greater than these two. So the total work, uh, the The sign of the work for the pros for the cy uh, cycle, I'm sorry, is negative because work from A to B is greater than work from B to C plus work from C to A. And that would be the explanation. Now, something that is always going to be the case whenever you are doing uh, circles or cycles is that whomever is the top process, so the process that is higher literally on the PV curve, is the one that's going to dictate the sign of the entire thing. So, for so, you know, if these were mirrored, then we would have the opposite. And, you know, that's that's always going to be the case. Whomever is higher on top, that defines it. Because if you do this exact same logic of, like, subtraction and whatnot, whomever is on top always wins. Because whomever is on top obviously has more area under the curve. And then a little bit of a trick that you can use to figure out the sign is that whenever you have a cycle that's kind of like a circle, right? It's closed. If the arrows are going clockwise, that means negative. And if they're going counterclockwise, so like flip the arrows like this, then that means uh, positive. I'm not going to justify that because, first of all, I don't see the, you know, that's not something that we have to do right now. And second of all, because I don't really like mindless memorization. But you go ahead and flip the arrows and do the exact same logic and you'll see that, you know, try it out with practice quizzes and whatever, and you'll see that if it's going clockwise, that's negative. And if it's going anti-clockwise, then that will be positive. But anyways, so moving on to part C, we have to determine the volume at point A. So, all right, so let's see. So this is number three, and we have to find the volume at A. Okay. So in order to find the volume at A, we have to probably make use of the different uh, processes that make up this cycle. For example, going from A to B is an isotherm. So if I go from A to B, that, that would be an isothermal process, which would mean that I can use uh, all of these equations over here. Um, TB. So, okay, so let's see. 
I know the... Oh, okay, so I know both pressures at A and B and I know one of the volumes. Oh, okay, so this is kind of easy because I just have to use my um, ideal gas law. So, so using my ideal gas law, BB... So like this. So the temperature for A has to be equal to the temperature for B. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them equal. And then I'm going to, so I'm, so I'm going to solve for T here by sending NR dividing. And then I'm going to make them equal because both temperatures have to be the same. So this means that pressure at A, volume at A, divided N A, and then R is just a constant, has to be equal to pressure at B, volume at B, N at B, and then R, which is just a number. The number of moles is not changing in this process and R is just a constant, that, so both of these cancel out. This means that pressure at A, volume at A, is equal to pressure at B, volume at B. So I'm trying to find volume A, so I'm just going to solve. So volume at A is equal to PB, volume B, divided by pressure at A. So pressure at B is uh, 1 And then volume at B is equal to 12. Pressure at A is equal to 6. And then the 10 to the 5s cancel out. So if I grab my calculator, which is... Um, oh, here it is. Oh, well, this is 12 divided by 6, so this is actually just 2 times 10 to the negative 3. And this is meters cube. Final answer. Uh, final answer. And that was easy because I know my processes and we just did a review on, on our equation. So that was pretty easy to figure out. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead and move to four. We are blazing through this. So number four says calculate the work done in B to C. So again, this is going to be, so calculate the work done B to C. So the process from B to C is uh, isobaric. And we know that isobaric means that the work equation gets greatly uh, simplified because work by definition is just the area under the curve on a PV graph. So work B to C is just going to be equal to negative sign change in volume times the constant pressure. So in this case, this is negative sign final minus initial and we're going from B to C. So this is uh, five minus 12 like this and then your um oh and this is times 10 uh to the uh, negative three and we do multiply these times one times 10 to the fifth so our final answer B to C is equal to our calculator. So this is five minus ten to the um negative three times one times ten to the 
five. Oh, syntax error. Oh, okay, let's see what happened here. So my final answer is 700 yields, and it's positive because we have this negative and this negative, and that is exactly what we were expecting. We were expecting a positive sign. Now, the one thing that I missed, which is something that I just realized, is that for part um, two, on the actual instructions, uh, we were asked the sign of Q. So we were asked the sign of Q. So my final answer for part two is that work is negative, and that means that Q is positive because delta u is equal to zero. So if delta u is equal to zero and work is negative, then that means that these two have to cancel each other out. So final answer is that q also has to be positive. It's not something hard to figure out, but I did forget it on the instructions. So I just reread them to make sure that I had everything and I was missing that, but you know, pretty easy to um, complete. And this will be the end of this practice quiz. So as usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe as that really helps our channel. And I will see you guys on the next video.